You have selected shuffle. Welcome to the Shuffle Pod. I'm Woody. Hey, hey, I'm George, coming to you live on your morning drive with a wacky morning crew. DJ, turn it over to you. And I'm DJ. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, that's pretty good. Feels so good to be back. Yeah, so uh, let us God. know. Tell us what happened. We're, we're, we've been waiting at the edge of our seats. Right now he's got a dick hole the size of a Phillips head screwdriver. <laughs> I met Woody for his brother's birthday party. and It was at a winery. And we get there, and I just all of a sudden... Just horrible, horrible stabbing back pain. And I was like, shit. So I'm trying to play it off a little bit. How long did I stay, Woody? About 45 minutes, maybe? Yeah, probably about that, yeah. Like, I really tried to stay. And finally, I went to the bathroom, and I'm just walking around the bathroom, wincing in pain. I don't want to go back out there. I don't want to go back out there. So then I went back out, and I told told Tasha, I'm like, we have to go. Yeah, you were turning pretty gray. It was bad. It was was bad. bad. I keep barf bags in my car now because my wife gets car sick. So she drives us home. I pull the barf bag out and just fill that fucker up. Just completely fill it up. She stops at a gas station. I start puking on the ground. Stabbing pains. So then I get home. I have my pain medicine at home. So I pop a couple of those, and then I'm just laying there. Just in horrible, horrible pain. Sunday morning, I passed one. This all happened Saturday night, right, Woody? Yeah, it was a Saturday night. And so Sunday morning I passed one, so I figured, out, okay, that's it. No, that wasn't it. All day Sunday, in bed, wincing in pain. So then Monday morning comes around, I finally, I'm like, I'm going in. So I went to the emergency room, and then I got a hold of my doctor right after, and he got me in that night and put a stent in and blasted me again. Dude, when you said stint, like, I thought just something, you know, small. Like a little spring or something. That's what I thought. Yeah. Well, no. That thing looked like a fucking bull whip. It's yeah. almost 11 <laughs> inches long. Yeah. Yeah, the ends were all curly cued up, and I was like, oh, yeah. man. Did you say, you said 11 inches long? It's like 10 and 3 quarter. So it almost made it to the to the bottom of your shaft, but almost. not quite. So then, <laughs> yeah. No, they goes, the stint goes up. They go in through the pee hole. Which is oh. just a terrible thought, but it's a surgical procedure. I'm completely unconscious. It's, it actually okay. feels okay. I, it's the only way I can get off now. <laughs> <laughs> they put about two inches of it into my kidney, maybe two and a half inches, into, into uh-huh. the kidney itself. Oof. The rest of it went through the ureter, which is the tube leading to the bladder. And, and so what is it? Push the stones up it then? Push them it is? back into my kidney. And then the stent stays in there. And kind of blocks the stones and makes the ureter get bigger because it's a foreign object. So the ureter gets bigger. Instead of being like a spaghetti noodle, it was like the size of a button on a shirt. Holy shit. Oh, my God. The bottom couple inches goes into my bladder. So it was really horrible. The whole, like, how long did I have it in? Four or five days? Yeah. I cried the whole time. I had it in for a week. I got it out Monday. And I, okay, I was sitting. Right, yeah. And uh, when they pulled it out. I had to take some sleeping pills for the doctor. And I'm like, sleeping pills? Dude, you're pulling this out of my dick hole. What do you mean sleeping pills? I need I need to go out. I need to go night-night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, because that's, that's terrifying. Yeah. So he's like, no, no, this will be good. So I take these two sleeping pills he prescribed me. I get there. I look at the doctor, and I say, I could operate a vehicle right now. There is no way you're doing this on me, taking two sleeping pills. He's like, well, how long ago did you take them? It should take 45 minutes to an hour. I said, I took them an hour and 10 minutes ago. And he's like, oh. Oh, my God. He, so he goes, I'll p- prescribe you another one. My mom was with me. She drove me because I had to have somebody drive me. He said, you'll have to go over to Rite Aid, fill up your prescription, and come on back. So I took it. That did the trick. But then he took this scope, and I, I was still coherent but so tired I didn't care. He took this scope. Uh, you ready for this? Uh, nope. Uh, put it in there. Put it all the way up my fucking dick hole. Oh, <laughs> two and a half inches. Grab up this there. Egg. Oh, first of all, oh god, I forgot. They took a syringe with no needle. Stop it. Nope. <laughs> listen, listen. They take the nope. syringe. No, no, not up she, in here. This nurse 
pulls it out so I can see it. It's like looking up, so she like holds it. To oh, she taunts you with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had no needle. She's though. like, I go, "This and my fist are both going in your penis." What? <laughs> I use the words. What the hell is that? And she goes. She had nails like Miss Cleo. She oh, goes, I'm going to go with play voodoo on you. She said it's numbing gel. I'm going to shoot it into your urethra. And I said, you're going to do what? <laughs> she goes, so she did, and it was just intense pain. And oh then she, my clamped, God. she clamped the end of my dick for like five minutes and let the numbing gel kind of take effect. She clamped it, like pinched it with her fingers, like held it. <laughs> I don't. She might have done it with her teeth. I don't even know. I was out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All I heard was an intense growling the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> she was like a dog on a rope toy. <laughs> Oh my god, oh, dude! So was it like a burning? Like I can oh, like, it was. I can only imagine what reverse peeing would be like. I, <laughs> dear god, reverse it's peeing. like somebody dumping a cup of milk into your penis, ah. just filling your bladder up, and then just going, going. Hold on, let me just put a little aura gel just in the dick hole. <laughs> oh, god. Yeah, you poor bastard! All this seems to be like medically. Uh, necessary instead of just cutting you open and taking it out. Yes, I would rather be cut open. Me I'm not too. gonna lie to you. Oh, Me too. Yeah. I mean, I love my, I love tiny Elvis. I love my penis. The doctor never gave that as an option. I questioned it early, and he's like, "Nope, that's not what we do for this. If they're bigger, like a golf ball, which they happen in people, then they go in surgically." I'd rather surgically have it done. I'm not gonna lie. I don't want anything up my pee hole. I know. I know. Uh, when he put it in, he blasted the stone again. That was the third blasting. And oh. now I I pass tons after that, tons. Like, I don't know how big this thing was, but I have passed just stones nonstop. Uh, the Three days ago your I wiener. passed one, and then two days ago I passed one, and that's, and that's all I've passed so far. The inside of your wiener has to look like just scarred up shark skin. It, it right. <laughs> right. Like those pictures of the manatees that have been run over by boats, you know, with all the chop marks all yeah. through it. Yeah. It looks, like a, it looks like my dad took the boat and just ran the prop on the inside of your Johnson. <laughs> you poor guy. And did he give you any, like, hey, this is probably why you have them? Or have you just walked up and smacked your father? Because that sounds like something you just kind of get from your dad. No, you know, upstairs right now I've got a, it's called a 24-hour urine kit. And I'm going, it gives you detailed directions about you have to pee in this jug for 24 hours, not straight. You get to take <laughs> breaks. <laughs> But every time you pee, you have to go into this jug, and then you have to empty this little preservative thing into it, shake it up, pour it into a container, and mail it in to a lab. Oh, I then, thought you were going to say drink it. No, oh, yes. You just got to shoot it, chase it with some Jameson. Delicious. The lab will analyze it, and then they will kind of get to a root cause of what's in my diet. You know, this is how OJ got into so much trouble. With that preservative in his blood. You know, You're I, right. I would be worried about sending this away to a lab. God, yep. you are right. They're going to sprinkle my urine at a crime scene. Yep. That is the most traumatic story I've ever heard. I mean, I've <laughs> I've heard of like, you know, like people's babies. It just fell out of the car and we ran over the baby's face. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, damn, that sucks. Actually, I've never heard that. I just made that up. But uh, and, and if somebody ran over their baby's face, I apologize. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to put it in perspective that what DJ had tops anything that you guys have had, especially because it's his wiener. And you know, every female listener that we have right now is just rolling their eyes going. Oh, seriously. and they're going, please try to bleed every month. Have you know, baby. I know. Yeah. Pass a, pass a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. But then again, with a baby, I mean, they go, they, they numb you from your spine down, you know, like, it's, yeah, it's, not everybody does that. Granted, granted. Right. Yeah. But that, that wasn't an option yeah. for you. You know? No, it wasn't. Cause... I asked. <laughs> I actually asked. Is there like an epidural type thing? And he said, he said, no, not for this type of procedure. It's too quick. No, because the uh, the physician that actually invented this procedure was a complete sadist. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> right. We have to. Funny thing is, we have to cell phone video it. Make sure it's on a low resolution <laughs> so he can watch the grainy part back that's the only way he can get off and you know what the thing is is he doesn't charge us for the knowledge on this procedure we just let him jerk off to every one of them i mean it's just like one of those things where you're like dear god man 
it was really a fast procedure looking at it, but it didn't feel fast. How about the gif from my brother on that text thread we're on, Senate of the Magician just pulling yes. uh, the, the handkerchiefs out and they just roll. He's like, did it look like this? Uh. And literally I was like, eh, 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 like in like, like closing my legs on the couch and because it made my nether regions feel uncomfortable. Where was he pulling the scarves out of? I wasn't involved in this thread as usual. Oh, it was the world's greatest. It was the best thread ever, Woody. You would just... I'm sorry you weren't part of it. <laughs> With this thread we have going, who's all in it? Everybody uh, but me. You, me, Murph. Basically everybody. Our wolf pack minus Woody. The, uh, the anchor. We the really should anchor. delete it and start a new one with Woody. Because it's a little ridiculous at this point. It, we've had this thread going for, like, probably a year. Yeah. And it's enriched my life so much. And you you so. can't... <laughs> all, the, all the knowledge in it can yeah. never be... It's basically like the Dead Sea Scrolls in text thread, you know? <laughs> and actually... No, we gotta, we gotta start a new one because I'm amazed. Like, I'll, I know our friends are assholes and we're assholes. Dude. But it amazes me. How unsympathetic people are. I don't think we should even talk about the stuff that was on there a couple weeks ago. <laughs> no, it's no, fucking horrible. We can't. I mean, people, we talk about stuff that people on Facebook Facebook would be like, these guys are just disgusting, sick bastards, blah, 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 you know? If anything we talked about on that thread, especially that one day, were to get out into the public, we'd all have to resign from our jobs. All of us. Yeah. No, yeah, you're right. You're it's right. bad. <laughs> like, really fucking terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. And I can't stop laughing at it. I'll go back no, and look it's at fu- it. No, <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. I'm not going to lie. Wouldn't know. Nope. It's Wouldn't it's know. so good. It's probably going to calm down a lot, Woody, when you get oh, on. I'm sure, we respect yeah. our elder. We respect our elders. We don't like to to talk about stuff, you know, that make make older people cringe. DJ, didn't somebody like ask me a question on that thread? And, and a while like, ago, Murph Murph asked something about Woody, and I was like, Woody's well, not on this, dude. <laughs> oh, well. I don't know who... St- I think Murph started it, but he started it a really long time ago. Yeah, it was probably the time that he didn't like you, Woody. Yeah. So, he didn't add it. <laughs> now, we'll get you added to this thing, because yeah. it's no, pretty it's badass, right. and it's never a dull moment. It goes off like when I'm at work and I'm embarrassed. I have to turn my phone over, yeah, you know, so that I don't, so people don't see like, you know, a nun, you know, blowing a beagle or something. I actually you know, put just... mine on uh, no notifications on that thread because on my Apple Watch it will just light up and it'll be like a freaking cock or something. <laughs> so like, I, I'm like, oh, oh god, oh god. Yeah. Hey, what time is it? I don't know. It's Dick Thirty. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, so what are we talking about today? Real life superheroes, aka Phoenix Jones, is what started the whole thing for us. Our yeah, started that, the discussion with us, at least. That dude is a complete badass. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, well, where's he out of? He's like in Las Vegas or something, isn't he? No, Seattle. he's out of Seattle, Washington. Seattle. Okay, okay. Yeah, because it's the rain, rain city, Correct. something. Because he's not the only superhero in that city. They did have the Rain City people. Is it a complete separate group? No. From Phoenix Jones, or do they work with him? They work with no, him. No, they work with him. Or used I mean, there's to. guys like, yeah, they, they disbanded. Uh, Phoenix Jones, uh, a.k.a., or a.k.a. his real name, is Benjamin John Francis Fodor. Uh, 29 years old. Um, he's actually a uh, mixed martial arts fighter. That's how he got his start. Um... And uh, pretty successful. Have you ever watched him fight? I know you're into all that stuff. I believe I have. I, I want to say yes, but I'm not 100% sure. Does he um, go by Phoenix Jones in MMA? Uh, yes, I believe so. Yeah, he fought mainly in the World Series of Fighting um, and then the Super Fight League. Uh, he was also in on... Uh, that sounds like a superhero league, too. Right, right. Yeah, he he's uh, 10 matches. He's 7, 2, and 1. Uh, as a fighter, um, he's got a pretty good uh, mixed martial arts amateur record. Also, how much do you make on a fight if he's had eleven or ten fights and won seven of them, and that's his mm-hmm. his whole career? How much do you make on a fight? 
Yeah, you're right. How much right. do they make a fight? Yeah. Money. How does he make money? Not much. No, not much. Um, a lot, that, and that's part of the reason that a lot of um, the, the mixed martial arts fighters want to form a union at some point in time because the wage scale is just dramatically lower than boxing. Um, there's guys that, that'll fight for $300 a fight. Whereas, like, in the UFC, you make up, I, I believe, like, the low end of the pay spectrum is 1500 bucks for a fight. Now, granted, you can get a $50,000 fight of the night bonus, a $50,000 knockout of the night bonus, you know, that kind of thing, which is good, but, you know, 1500 bucks. But I guess it's all driven on, just like professional sports, why isn't women's soccer paying as much as men's and why doesn't you know women's basketball play well it's driven on ticket sales who wants to pay to see you who wants to pay for the pay-per-views well to an extent because if you look at like if you take um now i'm just gonna be out in the open here i like boxing as a sport better okay okay but if for immediate instant gratification i like mixed martial arts fighting now the problem is is these fighters have agreed to fight at these wages, okay, um, that nobody else is ponying up to, to pay them more. And But you say tickets driven and stuff like that. If you take like a normal boxing, just a, a whole boxing card, okay, and we'll say it's at uh, somewhere in uh, the Barclays Center, okay, in, okay. In, New, in New York, they'll sell out. But also, so will the UFC. Now, some of the lower, like the World Series of Fighting and, and some of these other ones, uh, Bellator is, is pretty big, too. But they sometimes, they will sell out, like, but the UFC will sell out immediately. You know, there's such a loyal, passionate fan base for mixed martial arts. So he's not a UFC fighter? Uh, not now. He was, actually, I believe he was signed to the UFC. Uh, so MMA is not, is not automatically mean you're in the UFC. There's different... No. Mixed martial arts, there's all, MMA as a style. That's like saying I play baseball. Oh, yeah, okay. there's tons of uh, different federations and stuff you're in. Obviously, the UFC and Bellator and, and back in the day, Pride, were, were the, the three. It's kind of like back in the 90s when there was like the WWE and then there was Ted Turner. NWA and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Or, yeah. or with football, it, how like that league that Trump tried XFL. to help form try to take on the NFL yes kind of the thing. usfl yeah it and basically like people will argue um that bellator is the second tier um it's like 1a compared to the ufc a lot of ufc fighters like if they've hit a losing streak in the ufc they'll get signed to bellator if they're on the that you know the farther reaches of their career um they'll fight for bellator there's some really up and coming guys i didn't realize how little i knew about that stuff <laughs> I yeah, really. Oh, really. I thought I knew a lot more. I just thought that was just UFC. And where do you think Phoenix Jones is getting his money to to do all this stuff? I mean, I don't think it really costs much money for him once he gets the uh, suit. That's he's he has to make a living. Taking his training and just kicking his ass, kicking ass. You know. Yeah, but that suit. But he has to pay the Kevlar, from, from what I understand, like uh, stab resistant or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's a pretty badass suit. As far as real life superheroes is. go, it might be the cat's ass, yeah. you know, of suits. It is. It is. I don't know. I mean, he might have had sponsorships and stuff like that. He might actually work somewhere. He might have a job. I don't. You're know. probably right. He probably does have sponsorships, and you know, from like gym sponsorships or whatever, and and that. So sure, sure. Anyways, let's kind of go into what Phoenix Jones basically does, and then we can kind of translate into some other real life superheroes phoenix jones um got his start in uh being a real life superhero after somebody broke into his car oh yeah he put his baby in the car and the baby got hurt by the glass uh so he decided i'm tired of this shit i'm gonna do my part to um make sure that this crap doesn't happen again and he'll patrol or i i should say in the past, because I don't know if he's actively still doing it. It's hard once you get on the internet that there's like 2016 there was things, but let's just let's just treat it as present tense, okay? okay. Like he's actually patrols the streets of Seattle, Washington, and he breaks up uh, knife fights, and because he's been stabbed, he's been shot. You know, he just breaks up altercations and stuff. I believe he's he stopped a rape. It formed into 
a uh, oh wait, hold on. Let's actually say what he what he carries on his costume. He's got a full costume, okay, yeah. and he's got it's called Dragon Skin. It's a brand of bulletproof vest with stab plating on it and stuff. He also carries pepper spray, tear gas, and handcuffs, and a first aid kit, which is pretty cool. And he's pepper sprayed people. Actually, he got arrested for pepper spraying yeah. somebody Two women, during a right? fight. Uh, yeah, he got a uh, oh, broken okay. nose in sense. one of the altercations. Because uh, I'm like, why would he pepper spray you know, to break up a fight? But uh, two women, I can see. You don't want to get. Ass. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to get involved in that fight physically. But also, then enough people liked what he was doing that some other superheroes people developed a superhero persona, and they started the Rain City superhero movement um, in July 2011. The Seattle police recorded that 10, 10 citizens patrolling the city in superhero costumes. Uh, keeping some of the names of, all right, here we go, <laughs> Thorn, Buster Doe, the Green Reaper, the Mantis, Gemini, No Name, Thunder 88, Penelope, and Phoenix Jones. So it's um, they had the Rain City movement, which they actually disbanded a few years back, but they all patrolled. Why would you disband that? Why? I Why? Don't, I, I don't know. I'm I don't know. sure it was Perfect. legal some, reasons. Like the, I'm yeah, sure. and some of their costumes left a lot to be desired. I mean, you know, you had a guy in, like, ski mask and gloves and looked more <laughs> like a a criminal than, than a superhero, I guess. Man, there are some gems out there, man. There are <laughs> gems. Yeah. yeah. Do we want to Do we want to kind of transition into some of these badasses that do this? I think we have to. My favorite guy, he is from Perth, Australia. Oh, and yes. And he looks like a mix between Raphael <laughs> the Ninja Turtle. Right. Uh-huh. A member of the village people and Luigi. And and Rainbow Bright with those socks. Oh, yeah, and Rainbow Bright. You're right. Good call. <laughs> he is called, now this is the most intense superhero name ever, Wheel Clamp Man. Which is, I swear to God, if like if they made like superhero gay porn, yes, he might be oh, on it oh, yeah. with his wispy with his wispy mustache. He's got a fake mustache and a mask, yeah, like a like an eye mask. It's not very good. He has a secret identity. I mean, no one knows his name, and he basically is the guy who, to put it into perspective, he's the guy who walks around and feeds parking meters so people don't get tickets. That's basically what he does. But he actually goes around, and instead of feeding the meter, he he cuts the wheel clamp off of illegally parked cars with a with an angle grinder. Fantastic. So is he helping? All right. Here's the thing, and, and when you say that, I, I guess I I have to ask: Is he helping cars that have been immobilized? Yeah. So he's actually breaking the law. He's breaking the law, and it's actually for absolutely no reason. Other than he's got a personal vendetta that he probably never had insurance or a couple DUIs because looking at him, he looks like a drinker, let's be honest. (laughs) He he does look like a drinker. How much do you have to drink to get a DUI in Australia? Oh, a lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I just noticed that he's got... W, C, and probably an M written on his chest in Sharpie. (laughs) Yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't notice that before looking at it closer. But, okay, what he does, he cuts the wheel clamp off of a car. So here's the scenario. I get a ticket. My car gets booted. And and then some guy comes and cuts it off. Okay, that's only going to fuck my brains out more because I'm going to drive my car away not knowing it ever had a boot on it. But I'm already... In the system, I don't as know. I have a boot. I yes, you are. They, don't they they don't just throw a boot on and don't write down your license number. No, that's true. They just don't go walking around booting things just yeah. for the hell of it. They log it. You're logged. If you have a boot, it's logged. But what the what what the uh, the article is saying is is uh, motorists are grateful for his help in uh, helping them avoid a hundred thirty five dollar fine. That's bullshit. Because uh, yeah, okay, I, they have the license plate. But my thing is, how does this guy remain anonymous? He looks like a complete douchebag. And it has to take 10 to 15 yes. minutes to cut a and boot how off. And indifferent, how indifferent are the the Australian police that, okay, like, it's it's the dead of night, okay? And basically, 
out of the out of the the quiet reaches of the night, you hear, <laughs> and they're and, like, and see sparks flying, you know. Yeah, and they're like, "What the <laughs> hell is that? Is that a Steel Panther concert? Or oh, you know, with the sparks and everything? Or is it is it Angle Grinder Man? I mean, Wheel Clamp Man. I don't understand." And it wheel clamp man. Yeah, what would I say? Angle grinder man. Yeah, you here's my to, guess. And, and how much of a douchebag is he that he's like, I'm going to actually just cut the wheels, the the things off of cars. Yeah, I don't think he wears that suit out. I think he he wears a disguise probably, and has the battery powered grinder, and goes out there probably in all black. He probably wears this outfit for pictures. Because you can't walk around the streets like that. Well, how about the dude that looks like my dad? Oh, Captain Australia. Captain Australia, he's got the same jawline. He absolutely does. He's got does. the same jawline as my father. TJ and I were going through these pictures earlier, and I go, oh my god, it he, looks like George's dad. It, it does, absolutely. He's so, got a cell phone clipped to the outside of his utility belt. I just saw yep. that. Love he it. has a flip phone? It's it's not a flip phone, but it's older than a flip phone. It's the it's okay because if it's, phone if it is a flip. flip phone, it is my old man. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> does your dad frequently travel back and forth to Australia? Actually, little known fact, I was almost born in Australia. There you go. My dad was a teacher, um, and and my mom was a nurse, and our a registered nurse. Australia was in so dire need of teachers, they were willing to fly my dad out, pay him, I think it was $100,000 or something ridiculous like that, back in 1976 wow. to wow. teach. And my mom, the reason they didn't go, allegedly, from what I hear, because maybe they did, because there's a picture of my father donning a superhero <laughs> suit. Um, maybe... Uh, and they, it was because my mom was pregnant with me, and she was uneasy about the flying. Oh, uh, that in Australia is a looks, death trap. I mean, everything wants to eat you or... In, not with my dad there. I mean, clearly, he's in a burlap... It, it appears to be some sort of felt Yeah, it's suit. felt. Am I correct? Is yeah. it felt? Oh, yeah, it looks felt. With the big amper sand for the A. Yes. I'll tell you, I just... It looks like my yeah, dad. Yeah, definitely. And, and he's got... He's got, like, Flash Gordon-type uh, lightning bolt-looking things up on his top of his head. Or The Flash, I'm sorry, not Flash he's got, Gordon. He's got my dad's build, too. I mean, he's just a, a stocky guy, and holy crap. Yeah, it's... That actually might be my, my dad. And I think he's wearing a pirate shirt. It looks like it, the sleeves, yeah, with the real wide... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the big wide cuffs that come back. Like I have not known my father to wear pirate shirts, but... It may be his alter ego. I don't and know. And gardening gloves. So, George... He does wear gardening gloves. Maybe, maybe you uh, you got some superhero DNA passed down to you. I probably do. I'm not going to lie to you. I do a lot of extraordinary things on pretty much a <laughs> daily basis, so there is a chance. Um, I could be like that, uh, that 41-year-old superhero that just hasn't reined it in, you know, doesn't know the actual... So uh, maybe I will... You know what? What's that? I took a job serving people. Maybe that's my my calling, and I could be <laughs> a registration sex man. offender registration <laughs> man. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know. I I think. Oh my god, I could. How, be. how many rapes has George stopped by registering sex offenders? A lot, uh, right? Hundreds a week. <laughs> Hundreds a week. I should have a Netflix documentary on me. <laughs> Besides Phoenix Jones, I think the most real-life superhero out there is Ken Andre. I, I don't know about this guy. When he was a kid, he stopped a carjacking by throwing nunchucks at, at the carjacker. The guy ran away. He grew up... Wait, wait. Is this the guy that looks like um, uh, Liam looks, Neeson? Looks like a ninja. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he looks, looks like he looks like something off of Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Get over here. He goes he's by that Shadow. Guy. Okay. And he's kind of like a real life ninja. He's really well trained in martial arts, and he actually goes out dressed in all black and lurks around and sneaks around the city and stops people. He's stopped dozens of so muggings. He. It appears that he's basically a rapist without raping people <sighs> or a stalker. Well, yeah, he'd be a vigilante. 
And he also wears a super, uh, like a superhero type device. He wears a hearing aid that amplifies sound so that he can hear better. He's not deaf at all, but he wears this thing to help him hear better. Kind of like you see on those infomercials in the middle of the day about uh, the yes. old man yep. sitting at the restaurant going, what, what? He probably has that thing, but it's the older one from the 80s with a pair of headphones <laughs> and the little hand mic. <laughs> right. He wears that, and then he wears those HD vision sunglasses that you see for old people. <laughs> oh, yeah, blue blockers. Aren't they yes. blue yes. blocker shades? Yeah, yeah. Those things are badass. Actually, this dude, Shadow, does look like a kind of a badass. He does. I mean, he's he got really knee pads, does. you know, and everything. He has a sword. He does have a katana, so he's got my respect. Yeah. As much as we love the machete. I was going to say, are you sure that's not a machete with a cool handle? I, no. No, it's no, a I'm katana. Not. The handle's huge. Well, what if they took a machete blade and put a katana handle on it? I, I don't have the information in this picture to say that's not a machete. Right. I don't think he's dangerous enough to carry a machete. That's a good point. I would think if it was a katana, you'd see the bottom of it, the way he's standing, though. I, I'm saying it's a machete. You're right. I, I'm saying you just argue to hear yourself talk. Sometimes. Woody. There is no way. The man is 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 an average... He, and it's, He's too it, stealthy. for, for uh, Machete people, like George and I, are ruthless. We cut through lumbering, things to Lumbering, get ruthless hackers. Yeah. We this may kill one or two victims to get to the assailant, <laughs> but yeah. we're going to get to the assailant. Because yeah. I just... My, I just just maddeningly thrash my machete in the general direction of danger. Did you guys see that uh, article I sent you about the truck driver that uh, protected himself with his machete? Yes. Yes. We're very proud of you for, uh, <laughs> for actually defending yourself like that. Yeah, I guess uh, he was just trying to get some sleep in the back of his truck and heard a noise, and someone someone had popped his lock, came in with a big tire iron, and you know, told me he wanted his wallet, and the guy <laughs> grabbed a machete that he had stowed away in the back there and just went after him. Wow. Yeah, fantastic. You texted right after that that this weekend you're going to get one. I absolutely am today okay. going to get my, my machete. Okay, because I was going to say, it's Sunday. Yep. Yep, going to make a pilgrimage to uh, Harbor Freight and pick myself up a machete, and I might get a Navy knife. I might. Dude, you might as well. You need one for the boot, you know what right. I'm saying? Best purchase you ever had. Because if you get your machete like stuck in somebody's face or something when you're hacking, you need to pull out the navy knife and cut away that part of the skin that it's stuck in and bone, yeah. pull it out, and then start hacking again. And, and Woody, just to plant this seed, Harbor Freight sells battery operated angle grinders. Uh, <laughs> I I don't think they got a oh. boot big enough to stop the truck. Oh no, but you can you can start doing it around your hometown. Oh oh yeah yeah. Just or just. Angle grind the shit out of people's cars. Just, <laughs> just don't write Woody, on, yeah. you know, in, in angle grinder. Let me ask you this. With the technology that we have today, if somebody wanted to be like an advanced superhero, not a super soldier or anything, but an advanced superhero, do you think they could do it? Advanced. Like like Batman. Batman. A real I mean, life because Batman. technically Batman has no superpower. He right. just has... Awesome, badass guy. Actual existing real tech, if you were like Elon Musk, you're a billionaire, except Elon Musk is a little pudgy. That's Probably okay. not going to be Elon. But he's not, he doesn't have a lot of stamina, but he'll get you, he'll beat the <laughs> shit out of you if he gets a hold of you right. Right, real quick. So, unlimited money, what kind of tech could you have? Yeah. Huh. Well, you're going to have some kind of earpiece with a police scanner, right? Right. Yeah. That's, that's not outrageous tech. What about like those uh, those jet suits that those guys in Dubai fly around? This is yeah, this is part of the thing. I I really think legitimately you could. Yeah, I think it's too big. I think the big problem comes in with the um, the grappling hooks and that will like pull you up and and that we don't have motors that size that run on batteries that are gonna lift two hundred and fifty pounds. You know, because you got to figure Batman's probably weighs about 200 pounds, and he's probably got 50 pounds of gadgets on him. No, I, I think a real-life superhero, you're going to see, like, an, a smaller MMA fighter like Hoist Gracie. I think it's going to be somebody like 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, George, I'm looking at you. I'm not 130 pounds. <laughs> no, but, but I think they're going to be 140, 150 pounds in order to utilize all this stuff, to be agile enough to climb around to well let's let's talk about like there is invisibility cloaks but and we've talked about that on the show yeah. they're not the greatest but you could literally probably stand by a building 
and be like for like drunks walking but by. Here's my thing with that, George. Is okay. Yeah, you could. You, they could probably own it, and they could probably stand next to a wall with it. But what about the moment they got to get into a fight? They all that gear and crap is in their way. You come out. You have the element of surprise. You drop the cloak. You move around it. But really, why not just stand behind a pole? Right. If you're going to do that. Well, that doesn't seem very superhero. Once again, that sounds like a like a creeper. But it does. You know? <laughs> it sounds like a wheel clamp, man. I mean, I want to be able to like have the justification of I was standing uh, invisible on this building and this drunk pissed on my leg. Like that commercial you know? with the state highway patrolman painted yes, like a building. There's, there's, <laughs> they're real-life superheroes. There you go. Thank you, officers. We salute you. Um, the biggest thing is, is I think like basically, I mean, you have like tasers, like big time tasers where you could, you know, and just shoot them mm-hmm. like far and stuff. You could have your tasers. You could have your, uh, your remote amplification earpieces. You could have, if you wanted, you could do your invisibility cloak. Sonic the weapons. Kevlar. Absolutely. Kevlar. Now, now Kevlar, do you remember that uh, bank robbery? I believe it was in like the nineties in LA. Yes. Where those guys were shot Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, like, they had to headshot them to get them down, didn't they? Yeah, I hate to call them badasses because they killed cops. So, like, they're not badasses, but my God, did they take a lot of shots. You know how the police initially stopped them? They shot them in the legs because they noticed they didn't have body armor on their legs. So they repeatedly shot them in the legs until they immobilized them completely. Yes, yeah. They they had illegal weapons and... uh, they, the cops actually had to go to a gun range and get like assault rifles and long guns in order to in order to stop them. Yep. they couldn't compete with their with their side. That's insane. Yeah, they just had su- superior firepower. You know, those guys were. And nuts. They, I mean, it was just crazy. So like that's around back then. So it's lighter and more flexible. Absolutely. Now, that was kind of my point. They probably had like steel plates, like really good thick metal plates and stuff. I don't know what they had, but. Now, it's probably flexible. Well, a lot of our, our vests are still Kevlar, but they still have a, a, a shot plate. In oh, do they? Yeah, but okay. they're, I think they're more of like a, I could be wrong, but I thought they were more of a hardened ceramic. Okay, so for lightness. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So technically, if, if you were to be a superhero, yeah, you probably couldn't scale walls and shit like that. But, I mean, Phoenix, you could be Phoenix Jones with... Some more advanced, right? Weapons. Like I don't think his Kevlar is bulletproof, but it's definitely like stab resistant. You know, like it'd be a, you yeah. couldn't get a knife yeah. through it, but if someone shot him, they probably it's probably going through it. Yeah. So you could probably, with being a billionaire, you could probably get some type of. I mean, you could go to like a like a uh, armored place that makes the stuff, and you could probably, if you're willing to pay, you know, a million dollars for the suit. You can probably make it pretty bulletproof and flexible, to a point. But do you really think that 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 technology is there yet? I oh, think absolutely. if you're if you're going to dump a million dollars into it, I mean, you got to think like you're not even going to see that on soldiers because a million dollars a suit, there's no way. But do you think technology yeah. is? There? I guarantee they could. Yeah, I do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> We're talking to each other over a computer, you know, and record. You know, I mean, it's. It seems like that's less of a technology than this, what we're using right now. I don't think it's publicly accessible. That's the thing. Right. It costs too much money. Probably. Hmm. If you had it handmade, every inch of it handmade, reinforced with small plates so you could move around, make it light enough. Yeah, like some hardened carbon fiber, you know, nano web technology or something like that. Fuck, I should have done that. Damn. That sounded good. That's what we should have invented. We could be billionaires. Carbon fino fiber nano web technology. <laughs> People will be like, sign me up. Wow, that sounds fucking awesome. Yeah, and I just basically just described like a fancy pair of underwear. <laughs> sweat wicking underwear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you would have to have a sweat wicking uh, undersuit, oh, right? Yeah. In, in the cooling station. In yeah, that cooling like station drivers. that runs through you. Yeah. Yep. But you'd have to have something more yeah. portable because I think the NASCAR ones are actually like in the car. And you hook your right. That's kind of my point. Like you got all this gear, you got to carry that around. Not only just carry it around, you got to fight with it on and hop from building to building, and you know. Well, okay, but if you just have a utility belt, like a law enforcement officer with the stun gun, the pepper spray, the cuffs. I mean, then all of a sudden, 
it's more of a feasible, reasonable right. thing. You know, you're not carrying around like a jet pack. Now, I mean, and you know what? You could. U.S. soldiers carry around how many pounds of gear? I, I don't yeah, know this. Yeah, that's a lot. But it's yep. heavy. On your it's, back, it's all the greater time. than seventy yeah. pounds. Yeah, it's like of... carrying a big bag of salt on your back and fighting with it. So it's possible those guys are in good shape. So if you got in really good shape, you could carry around a hundred pound suit. I mean, they do it because the other thing that you're that you're losing sight of, Woody, is if somebody's punching you and you have all this reinforcement, you're not feeling it, so you don't have to, you know, exert like. Every time you're getting hit, you're not going, oh, and it's knocking the wind out of right. you and stuff like that. So right. actually, also, it could be like an exoskeleton suit where, like, you have assistance in the joints. Made of nanofiber yeah. type technology. Yeah, nanoparticles. Yeah. Yes. But, like, the artificial muscles on the exoskeleton Absolute. suits, oh my they, God. they are developing that. It could give you jumping ability. Yeah. Like you could, like literally, like the average person, like myself, can jump in two inches in the air. Um, <laughs> I, they could, they could increase that to like fifty-six inches. I was gonna say three inches. You know, three and a half. I, inches. Actually, yeah, I, I, I have heard about that. It was like a Titan suit or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, you actually get into yeah, it. Military yes, is developing yes. for soldiers. It's almost like an avatar. Yeah. How they get in it. But. It, and they, oh, like, God. You, you I do love the it. controls. Except you're running in it. It's just kind of like leg stilts for like drywallers kind of right. thing. Yeah. It moves with you, but it's a full suit. And it everything you do, like if you want to lift something, your suit, the, the cylinders and like the, the artificial muscles are doing the lifting. So like you could lift a couple hundred pounds with your No, arms. they're saying these things, oh, my they're God. Saying these things are 10 foot it. tall and they could pick up cars. That Titan suit or whatever it is. Uh-huh. Yeah, I yeah. So I guess if you have a billion dollars, you could right. definitely afford one of those things. And we just answered it. Just buy yourself a Titan suit and some pepper spray, and you, you could be a superhero. Yeah. How about that guy who made the bear suit? Oh, I, I remember like, that no. guy. Yeah, I I can't remember the details. I just thought of it, but the guy who made this he suit. got attacked. Uh, a, a guy got attacked by a bear, and um, then just like dedicated the rest of his life to making a bear proof suit. And it's just this, like it started. It's just a bunch of metal. It man. started out as like one of those full body karate padded suits. You know, it, it started out like that, but getting just a little bit bigger. Like the dog ones, right? Yeah, and but now like the dog resistant. Yes, now it's all like um, polycarbonate. You know, it's it, you just it's huge. It would seem you could only get that wrong once. Yeah, he he lived through it. Well, that's the thing is he keeps t- he keeps trying to test it, but. As soon as he gets anywhere near a bear, it just runs away. It just sees this thing and is like, "Fuck, fuck you! I'm out of here," you know. So like they they try so to. So he needs to he needs to make it out of salmon. It needs to have I like honestly a salmon get they, skin. They tried that too, like hanging meat off of it and stuff like that, and going out and just could not either find the bears or or whatnot. But uh, so they ended up trying to test it by like hitting him with a car, like running <laughs> running into him at 35 miles an hour with a car, taking one of those logs. Like, you remember how the Ewoks in, uh, in Return of the Jedi, they released those logs and they came in and smacked him. <laughs> like, he, he, he has, a, has a big log that hits him in the chest. And, oh, my God. He's using... <laughs> I root for physics on that he, one. You know? You you've got to root for the logs. It, he's like, I'm using Star Wars technology. And people think it's really right. badass. And then he just releases I, a bunch of logs. I learned this on the planet Endor. <laughs> They're thinking he's got some laser thing up to it. He just pulls a string and releases logs. <laughs> it's really freaking medieval. <laughs> Fantastic. That is I forgot the about that guy. He, he used to show up on shows all the time. I think he was on Stern, wasn't he? He probably was at some time, but like, uh, there's a lot of video of him on on like TV's top funniest, you know, that kind of shit. But yeah, I think that's it for uh, for superheroes today, guys. What do you think? You got anything else to add? I think I need to find a billion dollar job, yeah, me too, so I can buy one of them Titan suits and start yeah. kicking ace. Well, we got you know, I mean, two possible things, George. You can either create what did you call it, nano webbing, nano web technology. Yeah, you can either get on that or now that our song's released i mean we could be one hit yeah. wonders but i don't see that happening um i see us doing like a a, a two two disc uh super That's set kinda, yeah because once they hear it you know that kind of thing i mean like 
for our debut album, that should be pretty much like we give the fans what they fucking yeah. want and give them two discs with uh, a digital copy um, with unreleased tracks, some live video that footage. Boy and stuff like that boy can play. You'll need the radio version. That boy can play. You'll you'll need the, the techno version, the yeah. dance version. Yeah. That boy can play. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like that thing. That 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 boy can play. And you get like the disco or the uh, robot sounding harmonica in it. I'm getting lightheaded. Play the harp. Play the harmonica. He's not gonna play. Play the fucking harmonica. I'm getting lightheaded. I put it away. <laughs> that boy can play. Epic. It's fucking epic. Oh, it's good stuff. And then people right now they're, they're just jamming. going. Oh, <laughs> whoa, 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 they got whoa. Glow We're gonna hear it on like the new edition of Jock Jams. <laughs> you know? Do you believe you can win this fight tonight? You know that thing on ESPN? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, pretty much. We're going to get the bear suit guy yeah. to come in, and Woody is going to jump on him and bite him in the yeah. back. That would be the video. He, Do you believe you can win this fight tonight? <laughs> We're going to have two bouncers outside. It's going to be yeah. Shadow and Phoenix Jones. Oh, fuck yes. Uh, I love it. Wheel clamp guy. Boys, this we'll, was... we'll get away. Any cars parked illegally. Yeah. Wheel clamp guy's going to just... We'll get him up there. He's making sparks. Oh, yeah. We're having a good time. We'll get my dad with the at symbol <laughs> just basically kicking ass out there. Oh, and my God. And all of a sudden, it's... You'll hear... I mean, he's... It looks like a damn Yankees concert, you know? Just flying sparks. Woody's out there fucking smashing watermelons like Gallagher. He's just basically... And he's just... Oh, he's he's asleep. Like, it opens up. The scene opens up. The stage curtains open. Woody's asleep on his bunk cab in his truck. And all of a sudden, a creeper comes in the thing. Woody, you hear... Machete is on sheep. Woody's running out. <laughs> that boy can play. You know, that angle grinder guy comes out. <laughs> just sparks flying. Did you, did you oh. Jackal? The, the group Jackal that like had nice. the, the chainsaw and all their music. Yeah. Jackal with yep. a Y? I saw them open up for Aerosmith yeah. one time. And they were like <laughs> chopping <laughs> apart a, a, a stool. Like, like a wooden stool on stage with a chainsaw. Oh my god. Nice. I like that. He's like, we're gonna we're gonna cut the leg off this and have somebody sit on it. <laughs> yeah, and everybody's like, fuck yeah, chapel with a Y. All right. Until next week, guys. Woody, tell them how they can get a hold of us. All right, the shufflepod.com. You can email us there. You can get our to our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram account. And uh, if you want to support the show, as little as a quarter a show, go to our Patreon yeah, page. I heard and, uh, about that. A the, quarter a show. That's yep, yeah. and it, it'll it'll help. That's a hell of a deal. And it is. Patreons, new patrons that sign up, we will send you the grainy film of DJ getting the stint removed <laughs> from his penis. Until next week, guys. Have a good yeah, one. Yeah. Take All care. Right. Bye. I love my penis.